each of the corals that we have here uh, fits into a particular spot, um, depending on the amount of light that it needs and the amount of water motion that it needs. There was a lot of complex engineering that went into creating the water motion systems or the circulation systems on this exhibit. Uh, there are three very large pump, 40 horsepower pumps that drive manifolds of nozzles that are um, that alternate. So it'll, the water current will come from one direction for two minutes, and then two minutes later it comes from a different direction. We did a one year long sunlight study of the site to determine what the best placement was for the rainforest and the coral reef exhibits, which are the most sort of light, needy exhibits that we have. And so early on in the design, um, those exhibits were in different places in the building, and they actually got shuffled around in order to place the coral reef in a spot where it made most use of the natural sunlight. We're here with Bart Shepard, Steinart Aquarium biologist, and he's going to tell us about the process of introducing coral into this new environment. Well, what we wanted to do was create a, a very large and elaborate coral reef tank. One thing that we didn't want to do was go out into the wild and harvest coral from natural coral reefs. Once the word kind of got out that we were trying to grow corals and grow a coral reef in a sustainable manner, we had all kinds of people from local hobbyists and local aquarium societies donate large pieces of coral to us. What we did was take those corals, plant them onto rocks using a special glue, lock them onto the rock and then grow them into larger colonies. Each individual piece was then brought over here in the back of a truck, packed in styrofoam boxes or in large plastic coolers and hand placed in a specific location. And we take lots of pieces from the same species of coral, we put them on rocks together and then we grow lots of rocks that have lots of little branches on it and we put those all those rocks together and we create the illusion of a much larger, much older colony. There are a number of different types of corals, um, generally we, we term them hard corals and soft corals. Uh, most of the corals that are in this tank right now are the hard corals and those are corals that actually make a limestone skeleton. They're the ones that are out there building coral reefs. They take calcium and carbonates from the water and they make rock out of it. So they're basically making rock out of water. And people think of coral, they don't really think of aggression. Uh, but, but coral is a very aggressive organism and it, a lot of corals will produce um, stinging cells, very powerful stinging tentacles called sweeper tentacles that they put out into the water surrounding them to try and sting and kill anything that comes up close into the neighboring vicinity. We had to leave a lot of space between the, the Galaxia coral and its neighbors because those sweeper tentacles can be up to about a foot long and they'll just lay them on another coral and um, sting it and try and kill it. The coral itself is actually a colony of maybe thousands of individual animals and each one of those little animals is called a polyp and each polyp may not live for thousands of years, but that community, of, they're all connected, they're all their tissues connected and they all live together. Um, they're all clones from an original founder polyp. Um, that community can live on for thousands of years if the conditions are right.